Bottom of the AFC West, with only one win from five games, it's time to sound the alarm bells because the regular season record isn't the only problem infecting the Las Vegas Raiders. This is a franchise that seems to welcome chaos, drama, and misfortune. In its recent history, the Raiders had to fire a coach, John Gruden, for sending a series of racist and misogynistic emails to NFL owners. It was a controversy that left the entire NFL community gobsmacked. The Raiders also had to let go of probably their best wide receiver at the time, Antonio Brown, because he was obsessed with finding the perfect helmet to suit up in. It was a controversy that was so dumb that Brown was mocked and ridiculed endlessly. The Raiders then had to deal with another wide receiver issue this time with Henry Ruggs III, who drove at 156 miles per hour in a drunken state and got into a collision that cost the life of a woman who was burnt to death. More recently, the front office of the Raiders is facing immense scrutiny for financial disorder and neglecting to pay staff members, letting them go without compensation. It's nothing but problems, season in and season out for the Raiders, and they haven't learned their lesson as history keeps on repeating. In most Raiders-like fashion, again, a wide receiver is embroiled in controversy. Star wideout Devontae Adams was making his way off the field into the tunnel after a heartbreaking loss to the Kansas City Chiefs on Monday Night Football when he was seen pushing a cameraman who fell to the ground. The visual is not great for Adams. Not only does it leave a mark on his character that he's a sore loser and a bully, but he effectively placed the Raiders under the spotlight again as the worst disciplined franchise in the NFL. At this time, no judgment has been made by the NFL regarding Adams' actions but he's sure to receive a suspension of at least one game. The NFL higher-ups don't want to have the image of their league to be labeled as a violent one when things don't go the player's way. For years, Commissioner Roger Goodell has been attempting to frame the narrative as a sport that is good, wholesome fun for the whole family. The last thing he wants is for fans and staff to believe that his sport isn't a safe environment. But this inevitable suspension couldn't have come at a worse time for Adams and the Raiders, since Adams has been playing his heart out this season. His stats so far, he's reached over 100 yards in both of his last two games, scoring two touchdowns. He's the most targeted receiver and the biggest weapon for the Raiders. Losing him, even if it's just for one game, is huge, because it would mean that the odds of losing that game would increase and the Raiders can't afford to lose another game. It is indeed a huge problem to be without Devontae Adams because he allows for the possibility for the deep ball to open up for their quarterback. Quarterback who has problems of his own. So you might be asking, why would quarterback Derek Carr have a problem? Well, it's simple really. He's about to lose his get out of jail card in the shape of Devontae Adams. Now the spotlight would be beaming strongly on that Raiders jersey as this is how much Derek Carr relies on Adams. So let's take a look at the last two games. In the win versus the Broncos, Carr threw for 188 yards. 101 of those yards were to Adams. That's 87 yards going to other receivers. In the loss to the Chiefs on Monday night, Carr threw for 241 yards and 124 of those yards went to Adams. That's 117 yards spread out to opposing players. In both games, the majority of yardage went to Adams, so it's clear that Carr has a big problem facing him when Adams does receive his suspension. So who is Carr going to throw the ball to? And would those players possess the catching skill and quick separation needed to be open once the ball is snapped? Absolutely not. The Raiders will have to rely heavily on the run game, which has been working out for them so far this season, but with teams now knowing how the Raiders are going to play, it's more than likely that the run-first strategy will not be as effective. Game planning could be viewed as a problem, as it should, but what compounds the problem is the person making the decisions on the field. And that individual is head coach Josh McDaniels. So let's start with his record as a head coach. McDaniels is 12-21, meaning he has a win percentage of 36%. How in the world would anyone want to hire a head coach who wins less than 40% of his games? It's unheard of in the realm of logic, but apparently with the Raiders, it's just them being them. Incompetent, ill-informed, poor decision makers that take pride in doing a horrible job as leaders of a franchise. 
What should sting the Raiders fan base is that Josh McDaniels is showing signs that the Raiders could easily have been a 4-1 team rather than a 1-4 team had he made the right decisions down the stretch. All their losses so far this season are 6 points or less. That margin of defeat seems to indicate that the team on the field is good enough to compete, but the coaching decisions from the sidelines are letting the Raiders down. It's one thing to believe in a coach who has a losing record, but it's another for a coach to be given another opportunity only to fumble it. It might be early in the season, but it's tough to see how Josh McDaniels will change his ways and his play calling to get enough wins to make the playoffs. After all, it's not his fault that he was hired to be the head coach. It's not his problem that he managed to convince the main man in the front office to give him the job. This leads me to the Raiders' biggest problem, owner Mark Davis. The owner of the Las Vegas Raiders, Mark Davis, is a true testament that money can't buy you a decent haircut. But besides his stylish problems, Davis has a lot of issues that he's dealing with, and they all stem from a lack of leadership and competency at the ownership position. Davis is currently tussling with his former team president, Dan Ventrell. Ventrell believes he was fired in retaliation for bringing up concerns made by multiple employees about hostile workplace conditions within the organization to the NFL. This is what Dan Ventrell had to say. I take that responsibility very seriously, which is why multiple written complaints from employees that Mark Davis created a hostile work environment and engaged in other potential misconduct caused me grave concern. When Mark was confronted about these issues, he was dismissive and did not demonstrate the warranted level of concern. Soon thereafter, I was fired in retaliation for raising these concerns. I firmly stand by my decision to elevate these issues to protect the organization and its female employees. So now the owner of the Raiders is facing a battle with the NFL and with his former employees. It's a huge problem because the issues at the top tend to trickle down to the bottom causing disharmony, mistrust, confusion, and uncertainty among everyone involved with the franchise. The Raiders aren't being run well, not in the front office, not on the sidelines, and it's affecting the game on the field. There will be players who will see what Devontae Adams did and will be told by their coaches that it's unacceptable behavior, even though it's a reflection of the general frustrations of being associated with such a franchise. One that has no leadership, no guidance, and no culture, other than getting into serious trouble with the NFL and everyone who leaves them under a cloud of rage. Even if the front office issues weren't a problem, there would still be the issue of having a coach with a severe losing record on the sidelines, calling plays and losing 80% of the games. It doesn't help that the star wide receiver who they went and got in the offseason will be banned, and that will affect the quarterback play and overall team play. These are just excuses to some, but for the Raiders it's one massive problem. Everyone in the organization needs to take a deep look in the mirror and remind themselves why they want to be a Raider. Eventually, they will realize that there is a lack of strong leadership and that problem lies at the very top. So where do you think the Raiders have a problem? Is it the players, the head coach, the owner? Please let us know in the comments below, but before you go, if you still want to watch some awesome NFL content like this, please watch the next video that will pop up on your screen.